My name is Yashis from First Updates Now, and with me today on Behind the Bot is Team Cyberbolts from uh, Southington, Connecticut. And today they participated at this Connecticut First Tech Challenge State Championship, and they did very well coming in at a Finalist Alliance Captain. And with me today and their unique robot, we're going to be having a Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So, to get started with the robot, how, what is your drivetrain like? What speeds is this? What is it running at? Mechanum, six wheel drive, etc. How did you come across with this design? So, we have a four wheel Mechanum drive with four motors on each, like one on each wheel and each motor is a 15 to 1 and we have special wheels that are bigger than the original rev wheels so that makes it so when we pass over pixels the pixels don't get stuck inside of our robot great and moving on to your intake how's your intake work for collecting pixels you guys were really good at it and we really just like to know more about how you intake your pixels so our intake is mainly a lexan plate that we use uh, using a roller this roller comes down on it and this motor runs the roller at a, a rate where the pixels can slide right in, get stopped by the backstop, and can go right up into our drive base mode. Once this happens, it goes up against the wall and it just outtakes using the same roller. And for your outtakes, I'm assuming you just reverse the intake and then how, do, how does it get to the other side? Do you have a pass-through system or do you just have to turn around the robot? So we use a joint arm, which we have right here. What our joint arm does is we have two motors on both sides. Each of them are 125 to one. Our entire arm lifts up like that and goes against the backdrop. And so the joint arm allows for different heights. So we have three different settings on our controller. We have low, medium, and then high. And that makes it for more pixel accuracy. And yeah, and our same thing, the arm also works for end game. So what it does is it latches onto the truss like this because this is our pre-climb position and then the entire robot flipped itself up. That's awesome. So moving on to your hanging drone, how do those work for your robot? Because those are a big part of this year's end game and they're really important for getting those TBP two points. So she explained the uh, end game pretty well, but the drone, what we do is we have a 3D printed model of a drone launcher and that drone launcher is powered through two rover bands that you see here and it goes all the way back, which latches on through a hook right there. In, in a match, the servo will unlatch the hook and the uh, rubber bands will push forward, causing our drone to launch. Great, awesome. So one question that I have is, with your arm going to the other side of the robot, have you had any problems with the robot tipping over or anything like that? So what we did to prevent this from happening is we have steel plates on the front of our robot. This so makes it so that the weight is balanced out so when our arm does flip over, it doesn't flip over our robot. But in the chance that it does, we have a position so we can go into low and that'll automatically make our robot lift up by itself. That's really awesome. Now moving into the software side of your robot, how do you control it during autonomous teleop? What are your uh, teleop functions, driver enhancements? and uh, mainly like your camera stuff to see the prop in autonomous. So in auto, we use Roadrunner library, which basically allows us to make trajectories and just do good autos. We also run our arm in a thread, so that way we can run our arm and the drive base simultaneously uh, so that we can hold it up and move. The way we score the purple pixel and not the yellow pixel is we put the purple in a little bit, so that it's just barely in there, and the yellow one is a lot farther into the intake so that when we roll it we roll it a specific amount and then the, only the purple one goes out so we're able to control that we also use a state machine in teleop which allows us to get our arm to certain positions which simplifies our scoring in addition to that we control it with two pids one for the wrist and one for the arm 
So you mentioned the Roadrunner library. Do you guys use that with dead wheel encoders or do you, are you using your Mechanum uh, drive encoders as your localization? We just use the built-in motor encoders. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Yashis, and on Behind the Bot today, we had Cyberbolts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.